everyone, Nicole Steckline, technical agronomist for DeKalb and Asgro in Northeast Iowa. It has been a crazy winter, if you really want to call it that. Um, December was beautiful. We got so much done. There was a lot of tillage that happened, putting on anhydrous still, um, getting dry fertilizer on. And then we transitioned into January, which overall January was actually still average to even slightly above average temperatures. What brought it down was that 10 days to two weeks of super cold weather. But even with that one shot of super cold weather, we actually still lacked a broad spread, nice, deep, hard freeze because of the snow cover that we got the couple of days before we got really cold. And then we transitioned into February and the entire month was 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Now on the plus side, we got all of that moisture to soak into the soil profile instead of running off. Bad for the Mississippi River and our farm ponds, but good for the soil moisture profile. And now as we transition into early March, we're continuing this trend of above normal temperatures, both in the highs and in the lows. Well, there's a lot of spring left to happen. We still have the second half of March that we have to get through, and it looks like we are going to cool down some. And then we also have April to contend with. And if you believe the Farmer's Almanac, it's going to be cooler and it's going to be wet. And if you go by the rain 90 days after January fog, if you remember, January was extreme. I mean, it, it was so bad for your vitamin D um, and your mood because it was so foggy in January, which would say 90 days after we're going to be wet. So here's what I'm looking at for early spring 2024. First thing that's crossed my mind is our winter annuals are already starting to pop. So remember that winter annual weeds are those that have germinated last fall. They overwinter and are the first things to break dormancy and start growing through the spring. Now, particularly if you're in a no-till or a minimum till situation, burn down of these weeds is going to be extremely important because they've broken dormancy already and they're starting to grow, which means that when we come to spray them, they're gonna be bigger, more vigorous, have a much larger root system, particularly when you think about like dandelions, and they're going to be harder to kill. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want to have these weeds actively growing when you spray them, which means higher temperatures. So we wanna be staying in the 50s for about 72 hours when we spray them to ensure that they're sucking in that chemical and they don't have the time to metabolize it before it can kill them. Other things we need to think about, be aggressive on your timing, like we just said. Be aggressive on your rates because chances are they're gonna be big when we go to finally spray them. And then make sure that you're using the correct adjuvants to get it in there. A lot of our burn down herbicides are actually burner herbicides. So we need to get into that weed. So make sure you're reading your label using the correct crop oil, MSO, or other adjuvant. This goes for our cover crops as well. A lot of this stuff has broken dormancy and it's starting to grow. So don't sleep on getting this stuff terminated in a timely fashion before they start to amass a lot of biomass and before they start sucking a lot of moisture out of the soil. Be aggressive with rates, be aggressive on timing as long as the weather is right. Whew, had to ditch the long sleeves because I was getting a little bit toasty. So the next couple of things that we're thinking about is all about soil moisture in terms of corn rootworm egg hatch and our fall applied in hydrous ammonia. Now, when we think about our nitrogen, we're thinking about the fact that we applied it, it's sitting out there in the ground as ammonium, but when we hit 50 degrees, we're gonna start getting that biological activity, converting it to nitrate, which is then apt to leach out into our soil. Now, first and foremost, if we are applying fall anhydrous ammonia, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you put NSERV on. Now, the point of NSERV is to create a zone of protection in the soil where the anhydrous ammonia was put. And what it's doing is killing the microbes that are responsible for converting that ammonium to nitrate. So we've created this nice zone where that, that biological activity is not going to happen. The next thing that's going to happen is that coming spring, as the soils start warming up, 
to about 50 degrees, the biological activity is going to start to increase. Now, first we have to think about the fact that we are void of that bio, of those, you know, of those microbes in that zone. So the first thing that happens is when we hit 50 degrees, we're gonna start waking these things up outside of the zone, and then they're gonna have to make their way into and recover their populations in that zone of protection from the NSERF. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that that 50 degrees isn't like an on or off switch, right? Once we hit 50 degrees, it's not, you know, full born converting ammonium to nitrate. That's when those populations are going to start increase. So it's not an instant thing that's going to happen. With that being said, it's not going to take near as long to get those populations ramped up. More on average, at this time of the year, we're still looking at soil temperatures in the mid 30s in a good year. Heck, some years we're still just trying to get the frost out of the ground at this point. So we are going to hit that 50 degrees sooner and we are going to be increasing that biological activity earlier. And serve is still probably helping us, right? Because we've got a zone of protection where that nitrogen was. It needs to recover and move into that area. But we're probably going to see some conversion earlier than typical. Now, as I look at my soil temperatures right now, we're still sitting at four inches at 42 degrees. We're supposed to get a little bit warmer this afternoon as far as soil temperature, but then we're gonna decrease as our forecast gets a little bit cooler as well. So not time to freak out yet. It's also not time to freak out yet when it comes to corn rootworm and having an early hatch. In terms of corn rootworm egg hatch, just like we can track the development of a corn plant by using GDUs or growing degree units, we can do the same thing for corn rootworm. Now, we've been accumulating GDUs, right? We've had temperatures above 50 degrees, but corn rootworm are in the soil. So we need to use soil GDUs. So corn rootworm have a base temperature of 52 degrees. Our soils have not reached 52 degrees Fahrenheit yet. So our soils, our corn rootworm, have not started accumulating GDUs. At around 380 accumulated soil GDUs, that's when we can expect those eggs to start hatching. And we'll have about 50% of those eggs hatched between 680 and 750 soil GDUs. So will we have a really early egg hatch? Mm, we can't really tell yet because if we cool off big time for the rest of the March and all of April and we still haven't accumulated those GDUs, is probably gonna be pretty average. But if we continue on this warmer trajectory, we're gonna get to 52 degrees sooner and possibly have a little bit earlier corn rootworm hatch. Now, it's probably not going to be a big deal unless we pair that with a very late planting window. What happens when you get an early corn rootworm hatch and late planting is that you've got these teenagers, right, chewing on a small pizza, a small corn plant that doesn't have much root, and they will just blow through that crop. If we have a more typical year where you have an average date for corn rootworm hatch and a good average planting date, those two things kind of grow together and you have, you know, a teenage corn rootworm chewing on a teenage corn plant and they're able to kind of outgrow or grow with the feeding of those corn rootworms. Now with all of that being said, it might not matter. Weather has the ability to flip like a switch and everything that we were considering might be null and void if we continue on a cooler trend through the end of March and through April. That's all I've got for you today. Feel free to call, text, or email with questions.